Hi, this is Tony, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a battery-powered, solar-charged water pump for your garden irrigation. Rain barrel water collection systems are great, but unfortunately, if you want to do drip irrigation with a timer, they just don't offer enough PSI to push through most timer devices. So... If you get a on-demand pump or an electric pump that you can set up with a switch, you'll have at least 35 to 45 PSI, similar to coming out of your hose bib from your house, and you will have plenty of water pressure to push through your timer and completely water your garden vegetable beds, flower beds, whatever it is that you're wanting to water without having to hand carry buckets. For my system, I chose this on-demand pump by SureFlow. It's a 12 volt pump, so it runs off of a battery. They do make a regular pump that works off of electricity. If you want to make this simpler and just plug it into the wall, that is another option you could look for. I'll put a link in the video description to this pump. To get started on this build, we're going to do the wiring for the motor. You'll need some simple black and red wiring, some waterproof butt splices, and a wire stripper. First, just simply take one of your wires in the wire stripper and take off the end of the wire. Grab one of your splices and crimp it down on the end of the wire. Take the wire from the motor, go ahead and insert it in the other end of the splice and then crimp that down as well. Measure off about two feet of extra wire so you'll have some to play with when we get to the housing and then go ahead and cut that wire. And then finally using your wire stripper go ahead and take the end off of that wire as well. You'll do the exact same process with the black wire. Once you have both of those done, grab your heat gun and go ahead and apply it to the splice to shrink it and make it watertight. When we get to the assembly in the box, these two wires are going to go into the load terminals of the solar controller. The next thing we're going to prep is the wiring for the battery hookup. For this, you'll need your simple red and black wire, some F1 or F2 terminals to splice onto the wire, depending on the type of battery that you have. Here I have one with the F2 size terminals. That'll depend on which battery you bought. This would be a good time to go ahead and adjust your stripping gauge to one quarter inch. We're going to start off by stripping the end off of the wire. Then grab your terminal and let's go ahead and crimp that onto the end of the wire. Thank you. 
Next, we'll go ahead and grab the black wire, strip the end off of that, and then we're gonna go ahead and do the same process, crimping that terminal onto the black wire. Now that that's done, we'll go ahead and take about two feet on each wire, go ahead and string that out, and then cut the wire. The other end that we cut is going to be the one that goes into the solar controller once we assemble the box unit. And let's not forget that we need to uh, go ahead and pull the insulation off of the end of these wires. So let's strip them real quick. When we get to the assembly portion, these two wires are going to go to the terminals for the battery on the solar controller. You'll need a sturdy plastic tote. I like these HDX models from Home Depot, and I think other people carry them also. You'll need to cut any piece of wood to size to fit inside the tote. Then we're going to mount the pump to that piece of wood. Just simply take four wood screws and screw it down. Now that we have that ready, we're gonna cut holes in the side of the tote for our hose assemblies to go through. I measured the distance inside the tote from the bottom to the port, and now I'm just going to drill a hole for a pilot to make sure that I'm pretty much where I wanna be for my big hole. We'll do a quick visual check to see where it lines up and then take the hole saw and cut a one and a half to two inch hole in the side of the tote. This was a little awkward because it was right on one of the bends of the outside of the tote, but it worked okay. and do the exact same process for the other side. You'll want to buy some clear tubing from the plumbing aisle in Home Depot and some connections so that you have a male hose end on the one side and on the tubing for the other side you'll have a female hose end. The people in the uh, Home Depot plumbing aisle can help you if you don't know how to put that together. I cut my tubing to about three inches in length. Then I got some worm clamps and we're going to go ahead and clamp that assembly down. While you're setting this up, make sure that you've checked your pump for the diagram to show which side is the intake and which side is the output so that you're getting it oriented the way that you want it to be for your system. On my setup, I had the female hose end on the intake side of the pump. And here we have the male end. This is what we're gonna put on the output side of the pump.
Now that the pump is done, we're going to go ahead and set the battery in. I chose a Duracell 12 volt, 12 amp hour battery that I got at Batteries Bulbs Plus. I know they sell some cheap ones on Amazon, but the ratings aren't that great, so I went spent a little more money. Here's the solar controller I bought. You can see the terminals on the bottom. Next, we're just going to plug the red and black wires into the battery terminals on the solar controller. And if you did that right, you'll see the battery indicator light up in the middle of your controller. Next, we'll grab the wires from the pump and we'll put them on the load inputs of the controller. Now our final step before we take it outside is to hook up our irrigation timer on the output side of the pump. Okay, now that we're outside, we're going to go ahead and hook up the wires from the solar panel into the solar inputs of the controller. If you're not sure how to do a solar panel setup, I'll have a link here in a minute with a separate video showing you how to set that up. And once those are connected, if your panel is in the sun, you'll notice the solar icon is now lit on the left-hand side and showing that it's charging the battery. When you're using a water pump, one important thing not to forget is to have an inline filter hooked up before your pump. So this is before my pump and then I have a garden hose that runs about three feet from this filter to the in input of the pump. If you need a small hose like that it's called a leader hose and they do have them at Home Depot in the garden section. Once you connect the hose from your rain barrel system to the back of this box we're ready to go ahead and do a test and make sure it works. Since this is an on-demand pump, as soon as the timer turns on, the pump will turn on. Now, if you don't already have solar power, I do have a separate video showing how to do a setup on an inexpensive solar panel and even a hack on how to hook it up to an old satellite TV antenna on top of your roof if you happen to have one up there that's not being used like I did. Your wiring just comes down and hooks up to your system like we showed here just a minute ago. And if you don't have a sight tube on your system so that you can check your water level without opening the barrels, I do have a video on how to build and install one of these into your system. Check out the link above on how to do that. 
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video or learned something from it, please take a moment to like the video and think about subscribing to our channel for other updates. I have seen uh, quite a few people on YouTube that had water pump control units on their rain barrel system, but I couldn't find anybody that showed how to make one. And I hope you get some benefit from the time that I took to film this and put this video together for you.